So one thing that I think is really cool about this place is that it actually was a garbage dump. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine Give me, give me them good times, good times Nothing, nothing but good vibes, good vibes Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine So I am super excited for today's adventure because today's adventure is a little place that we found on an app called Atlas Obscura. And this particular place is pretty unique to the California area in the sense that it is a beach that used to be a dump site. And because it used to be a dump site, the ocean has kind of cleaned itself up a little bit and turned it into what is called Glass Beach. So we're gonna go check that out. Make sure that you stay tuned. We'll take you along and we'll tell you all about it. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. So this is probably one of my favorite places. I've been, I've been, re I got really excited about this place because uh, I'm a really, I really am good at finding sea glass. So this is probably one of my favorite places. And you don't have to look very hard here. Yeah, huh? you don't. It's you just, just like, all it's right there. over. Level so it's four. super windy here, but we're in this little cove where we're protected a little bit from the wind. Wow, the waves out here, oh my gosh, the waves are just <laughs> amazing. Um, it's a really interesting beach because it's not like, you know, a sandy beach, like hang out like in the sun sort of beach, but it's a beautiful beach. And uh, with the wind, the waves out further are just high, high waves. And uh, it's a pretty cool place to come. It's cold, colder than I thought it was gonna be. That's why we're all bundled up and layered but just beautiful, beautiful sight to see out here on the coast of California. Oh yeah, it's like a little conch. That's so cute. So one thing that I think is really cool about this place is that it actually was a garbage dump uh, back in the early 1900s before that people just really knew as much about the environment as we know now, it was a garbage dump. And then there was cleanup efforts that were done later on, but that's how all this glass came to be here, was it was actually dumped here as part of a garbage dump. One of the things that I think is unique just going through even these pieces that you know I'm picking up is the uniqueness of kind of nature's answer to cleaning herself up and you're finding pieces that have, you know, some of them have grooves in them still, other pieces that are just completely smoothed out, they're just all different sizes, different shapes, just so unique. And I think that that's just really, really cool how you see Mother Nature clean herself up in just such a beautiful way that has created this beautiful place. And I kind of think too, I like to always think about like metaphors for life when we're RVing and, and talking to the kids and just even things that we can learn to apply to our own lives. And just like that metaphor of even when things maybe feel like a mess or maybe when you feel like that you're just getting garbage dumped on you, <laughs> that something beautiful can still come from that. And I think this is a great example to that beautifulness that can come from something like, you know, a garbage dump. Hey, here we go. It's now and never take me home. Let's go together, look out below. Cause I'm falling for the Who wrote the book The Grapes of Wrath? The Grapes of Wrath. So the beauty of social distancing and reduced capacity in restaurants, it is a two hour and 20 minute wait to be able to have dinner at Bubba Gum Shrimp tonight. So that's horrible. Because we really, 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 really wanted to. We're gonna wait the two hours and 20 minutes horrible. and kill some time here on Cannery Row in Monterey and just see what else there is to do. But I'm starving and I'm gonna really be ready for dinner by the time we eat. So we're gonna kind of cheat 
We're waiting to eat dinner at Bubba Gump Shrimp. I'm starving. And we're hungry. So we found this place that has an appetizer that might get us by until we eat some shrimp. It's called Nestle Toll House Cafe. So let's see what they have here and see if it'll get us by until we eat. This is entertaining, I must say. Oh, I think mom's got it. What's up, Trinchin? Bubba gum shrimp. You do. That's nice. We got fried shrimp. Bubba gum shrimp. What kind of shrimp? Bubba gum shrimp. Fried shrimp. Fried shrimp. Coconut shrimp. Coconut shrimp. Lemon shrimp. Coconut shrimp. Pepper shrimp. Shrimp soup. Shrimp stew. Farming. I'm really hoping waiting two and a half hours to eat dinner was a good idea. And those are eating like that more than two and a half hours. But I have a feeling that long wait times are going to be the new thing. Popular restaurants due to the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's your pizza? Good. <laughs> How's yours? Good. So the sun is shining today, which is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful thing. We are gonna all head up to Santa Cruz today. The kids and I scoped out a beach there yesterday that was just gorgeous and it had something for everyone. It had a boardwalk area, um, plenty, plenty of space to spread out, huge, huge beach, a boardwalk. Um, did I say boardwalk? It had showers, it had bathrooms, it had just kind of something for everyone, waves. Uh, plenty of sand to play in, nice areas to spread out. So we're gonna go check that out today and hang out and enjoy this California sunshine while it is here, because it hasn't been very sunny in this whole Monterey area most of the time that we've been here. So we're gonna just head up north a little bit on the one and head to Santa Cruz. Really hoping that the sun comes out. And praying that they have non pricey surfboards. I've got one kiddo that really wants a non pricey surfboard. So we were told that Costco, oh, there's a surf shop, that is Santa Cruz surf shop. Maybe we can check that one out too. After yeah. this. Yeah. So Costco does carry surfboards, but the, not the Costco here. I called them. No, they no, they're out, but they do have surfboards, but they're, they're out. out. So, anyway, so we'll see, so I guess. I'm guessing a lot of people like surfboards here. We will, uh, figure it out as we go but either way we are in santa cruz and as the kids say we're going to cruise santa cruz and check it out we're at a boardwalk area so we're gonna just kind of check it out and at least take a walk along the beach so we'll see what we find so we found some sand and surf and sun does it mean it's warm i put my sleeves up to get some sun on my shoulders but i'm still pretty cold and Trinity's out there in the water. I have no clue how that she's not freezing right now. It's cold. But it's at least sunny. So we'll take the sun after days and days of cloudy skies. But we had to come up here to Santa Cruz to find it. But it's a nice beach, nice little boardwalk area. Um, lots of lifeguard presence, which makes me as a mom feel much safer being here. And of course, and surf and sun. So we're gonna take advantage of that. But it's always windy, it feels like, so. Why are your lips orange? Hey, Dad, you forgot my hand. Oh, I still see thigh, too. Can I touch him, Mom? Can I touch him? Can I touch him, Mom? Can I touch him, Mom? No, thanks. Are you sure? Yep. Wait, I think these are his bones sticking out of him. Maybe. But these are definitely ah! a couple of things. Dude, dude, you know, dude, dude, make sure. 
fishy sea lions and Jerry your own race. Oh jeez. Okay. Do you see any vicious sea lions? Yeah. Trinity, do you see any? Alright guys. Vicious sea lions. Enter at your own risk. <laughs> I'm entering at my own risk. Dad, we're for sure gonna see a sea lion. Okay. Just not a vicious one, okay? Uh, oh, Dad, right there! <gasps> oh, I see him. Oh my gosh, that's cool. I told you he had right eyes. That is very cool. There's Dad, probably some otters he around here, eyes. too. <gasps> oh. <laughs> you got him. He trained, is like, huh? he's like, I am on it. Dad, did you see, like, he had red eyes? Did you see the red eyes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told you about the red He was laser focused. Okay. I've never seen a sea lion leap up like that. I think that's why they're aggressive. No, he's not aggressive. <laughs> you can watch. <gasps> oh my. Oh, the bird oh, got the it. Bird got it. Aww. That's sad. So that's I got this. so gross. I got this whole fish. I kind of want to touch it. it. I honestly want to touch it. I just it. don't want the bird to get it. I want him, can I, I want can him I to get it. Touch you can touch it. Thing. Oh, that's so yeah. slimy and gross. Oh, it's so gross. Watch. He'll wait for it. I can see him. Guys, girls. Oh. Just keep it recording. <laughs> Whoa, he's on it. He's on it. He's on it. He's got it. Does he have it? Yep. He'll get it. Birds can't get that. Yep. He's got it. He probably is uh, taking it away. So we had a lot of fun in this Monterey area, didn't we? We did. It was so much fun. Lots to see. There was definitely a lot to see. Now, one thing that I don't think I was prepared for that we realized after coming in is that it's significantly cooler here just being so close to the ocean and the sun is like hit and miss where it felt like it was probably cloudy more than it was sunny. But there's a lot of people we talked to here at the KOA that we stayed at that come here to escape the heat from warmer places in California where then this is only maybe a two or three hour drive. And so they actually like to come here because a little bit. yeah, it's a reprieve from the heat in kind of the Central Valley areas of California. So I wasn't necessarily prepared for that. You know, I was thinking, oh, it's a good thing we've got the AC fix now and everything else. And we didn't even use the air conditioner once. We actually turned the heater on at night because it got down in the 50s, which, you know, some of y'all that are diehard campers might be okay with being 50 at night in the rig, but I'm just too much of a glamper and not a camper. I like my climate control. <laughs> so we ran the heater uh, at night, which it didn't run much but just enough to kind of keep the chill off or whatever. But it was a lot of fun. Um, the Monterey Aquarium, of course, was closed because of COVID. So that was something that we didn't get to see that given the times, if it was a different time, probably would have been able to see that and would have seen that if it was an option. Yeah. I was really looking forward to that because apparently it's connected to the ocean. So I was pretty excited about that, but there's always a next time. Yeah, exactly. And that's the wonderful thing about RV life is that you don't have to have this once in a lifetime mentality, but you know, it might be once in a long time, but it's not necessarily like once in a lifetime. And I think that this particular summer out, we've realized that more and more and we've slowed down our pace where, you know, versus staying at a place like two or three days, we've stayed for like a week at a time. So just slow down the pace a little bit. Um, it's given us opportunity to focus on our work, which we've needed to do. And we felt like that last summer we got stressed with that, moving around so much. And it's also a little bit less expensive because this thing sucks the fuel. And diesel in all the other places has been super cheap right now, but diesel in California is not as cheap as it was in Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but anyway, so we really had a good time. Thank you, fixing my hair in this area. And really did. yeah, and now it's time to pack it up and move on to the next spot. So make sure that you are subscribed so that you get notified whenever we drop a new video because we've got a ton more videos coming for you this summer. Lots of travel tips, lots of things to help you guys in your journey with RV life or just even family travel. So make sure that you're subscribed and stay tuned.